Welcome to our Automating Oscilloscope Measurements with Huntron Workstation and Access Prover's video. To enable this integration, it requires the Keysight I.O. Library Suite to be installed on your computer. The Library Suite can be downloaded from Keysight.com. So the first steps do involve installing the Keysight I.O. Library Suite onto your computer. There are several steps that are involved in the installation of this. After it's been downloaded, you need to unzip the file that the download file and create a folder on your computer, and you can install from there. Simply follow the prompts as it's installed in the library suite. This installation will take some time, about five to six minutes, depending on your computer. So be patient and let the install um, happen. So as the installation completes, you'll be prompted to restart your computer. In my example here, I'm not going to restart it, but you typically would restart your computer. Next, also make sure that your test instrument is plugged into your computer in the USB port. Power on your instrument. In this case, we're going to be using a Keysight oscilloscope. And then we'll also, to test the connection and make sure everything's working okay, we're going to put our oscilloscope probe on the test output from the oscilloscope. If you go to your Windows Device Manager, you'll see that you have an IVI test instrument there. Or you can also go into the Keysight Connection Expert, and you'll see your test instrument listed there. Make note of the serial number that's listed in this window, because we'll need that later. Now go onto your C drive, locate your program files, the Huntron Workstation 4.3 folder. Locate the E folder that is listed for your model number instrument. Open that folder and copy the Huntron external DLL that's in that folder. Then we'll go back to the workstation, Huntron Workstation 4.3 folder and paste that file into this folder. You'll need to replace the default Huntron external file that's already there. So we'll copy and replace. Okay, that step's done. Now we'll go back to Huntron Workstation, and we want to test the instrument, so we'll go into our Tools and Options, and we need to connect, connect the instrument. Notice that you have a new tab in your Options with the model number of your instrument. We'll select the product and vendor IDs, the USB port for the connection, and then uh, we'll type in the serial number that we noted earlier. The serial number is also noted on the back of the case of your instrument. So we have that complete. We'll click the Connect button, and you should get a message that the instrument was connected successfully. So we'll save this configuration. And now in Workstation, you go to the Signature uh, pane and select your new uh, instrument tab that should show up here. This is for our Keysight oscilloscope. Select the Range tab. And we're just going to take a simple frequency measurement from the test output on the oscilloscope. So let's select Frequency, and then we'll set up the horizontal and vertical scales. This is again for a 1 kilohertz signal at about 2.5 volts peak to peak. So now if you click the Get Reading button, you should get a reading. In this case, it's a measurement of the frequency at, we see that, 1 kilohertz. Or if you click the Waveform or Get Wave, you will see the waveform. So we know that the instrument is connected and working. Now we need to uh, install the scope or the probe holder onto the Huntron Access Prober. So you'll take the probe holder and mount it onto the Z probe. This, the Z probe is mounted to the rail of the Z axis. This holder will hold the BNC adapter and the scope probe. It attaches to the Z probe holder with two screws. Make sure they're secure. Next, assemble your BNC cable and BNC adapter. This inserts into the probe holder and has a wire that will connect down to the Z probe. So install that into the scope holder. Take the wire, disconnect the existing wire, the blue wire, 
and put the BNC wire onto the pin of the probe. We need to secure the wire with a, a cable tie. We'll simply take the cable tie and wrap it around both wires and attach them to the Z rail. This ensures the wires will stay secure and not come into contact with any of the case pieces. Last, you go ahead and insert the scope probe into the BNC holder or the BNC adapter and make sure it's secure. Now the scope probe cable, we need to make sure that it will stay in place as the probe head moves around. So we'll take a cable clamp and attach that to the cable. We'll mount this cable clamp to the top of the Z-axis case, removing one of the case screws and then putting the cable clamp in that place. We'll make sure we have enough slack built into the cable so it doesn't come into contact with the cable or with the Z-axis case. Make sure that's secure with the screw that's provided with the hardware kit. And again, move the probe up and down to make sure that the cable will not make contact with the Z-axis case. Now we'll go back to workstation. Let's add a new board. And then we'll save that board to our computer. Next, we're going to add a new sequence. Let's call it test sequence. Make sure that the the prober slot is selected correctly. In this case, we're using the middle slot. And then select your testers and disable anything that's not attached and enable your test instrument. Click OK. We'll save that sequence. Now we'll go to components and add a new component. We're just going to do a single point test here for, for this example. Just a probe package with one point. and then click, click OK to save that. Last, we need to add a range for this component. Let's do it for all pins in this case. And again, we're going to take a simple frequency measurement, so we'll our, select our tester type as our new test instrument, our oscilloscope. We're going to put in a tolerance. This will be a percentage tolerance. We're going to se select our, wave, uh, our measurement as a frequency. And then again, we'll uh, set our horizontal and vertical scales. I'm just going to base it on what I had set earlier so I can, I'll use what I can see in the range tab right now on this signature pane. I'm also going to set a comparison type as a reference percent. That means it'll be doing its comparisons with a tolerance that's used as percentage. Click OK to save that range. All right. Now I'm going to assume that the alignment's already been done on this circuit board, so we're going to jump, jump straight to the teach mode. So we'll go ahead and teach the location of our test point here on this resistor. Get that into position, and then save that. We also need to save the up and down position in the teach height tab. So we'll lower the probe tip down towards the board, and we'll set our up position first. We want that to be about four or five millimeters above the board. So we'll save that. And next we'll lower the probe tip down until it makes contact. We'll make sure we have good contact so we can get a good measurement. So we'll save that as our sequence Z down position. That's all complete so we can now execute the test. We'll type in a serial number, click the start button, Click OK to enable the test. You notice that the waveform is captured on the scope there. And it's also displayed in the scan of the in the workstation software. We'll click the troubleshoot button to take a look at this. Here's our waveform. So we'll set this as a reference. This will be now our comparison waveform and measurement. Let's run the scan one more time. Click OK to scan. You notice the probe goes and scans it. And we should get a past indication. We do, because it was comparing to the same waveform. So if we open the troubleshoot, there's our scan. So it's all very simple. We appreciate you viewing this video. And feel free to view any of the other videos on the Huntron YouTube channel. Thank you for watching.